I'm going to go through with you the triangle of need. So with any large group of people, they will be people that will have anything from very low levels of need to very high levels of need. Perhaps the majority of people, they have to pay their council tax, they have to do various things in their lives, and their level of need is very low. They can afford to pay their taxes, they can afford to pay their rent. And they're down here. And then you get uh, someone who, or you might even get the same person, and for some reason they get into difficulties and perhaps they can't pay their rent that month. So their level of need increases. They may have other situations in their lives that's got nothing to do with uh, the council or their rent that actually creates difficulties for them. So at that point, the public sector organisation has an opportunity to do three things, one of three things. They can either help them and their level of need goes down. They can choose to do something and actually their level of need continues to rise. Or they can do something and their level of need stays the same. So what may happen with some people is their level of need increases. What's interesting about this is if you track this with the population you'll find that the great majority of people are down here, very low levels of need, and they can cope. And as they get higher in terms of level of need, their ability to cope reduces, and the amount of support potentially that they need increases. And in terms of numbers of people, if you could track that, that looks like a triangle. The most people are here, some people are here, and there's a small few that are in critical situation. So this is low level of need, and this is some need. And what we tend to find is that if you look at someone who's here, they haven't always been there, they actually have been on a journey that over time has taken them to that point. They originally were here. And the amount of resources and effort that's required at this point to help them get further down the triangle is quite significant. It would have been a lot better if earlier on, perhaps a year ago, we could have helped them at this point so that they wouldn't need to have gone so high up the triangle of need. And what you tend to find is that in organisations, typically, when you examine the journey of someone that's gone up this triangle of need, you find that at the, many of these points, although organisations have attempted to help and support them, the reality is they haven't actually had that level of support that is, that is helpful to them to actually stay or reduce their level of need. Now don't forget, this isn't dependent on any organisation. This could well be something about their lives. They may be going through a very difficult time in their lives. Um, they may have children that are going through difficult times. And so this may be out of their control and it may be out of the control of the local authority. However, there are certain things that we can do to help that person to stabilise much earlier on than getting up to this point. So that's what we found with the triangle of need. So in terms of resource, the amount of resource that's needed to help that person go down increases the further up the triangle of need that you go. So just to summarise, the whole point of this triangle of need is to identify what level of need someone has, to recognise the potentially 
with our engagement with them, we may be pushing them up the triangle of need. And that, in the long term, is not what we want to do, and it's certainly not good for that person who should be receiving help. So can we do something as early on as possible to stop them from going up that triangle? Even if it takes more resources at this point, it'll be a lot better longer term. What's, what's interesting is that over a period of six months, a local authority managed to get this group of people in the middle tier of some need down to a level of low need. And they did that and they demonstrated that actually the amount of cost and resource that went into that was significant, but it was a lot lower than keep, keeping people at this level of need. And what's interesting is that we found that in some cases they could only get support if they were bad enough, in particular things like mental health. So someone had to go right up this triangle before they could actually get seen. Of course, by that time, the cost to the public purse has increased enormously and the effect it's had on that person and those around them is enormous. So that's how the triangle of need can be used in an organisation whereby every single officer in a council or public sector organisation, if they are aware of this triangle of need, they can then themselves recognise when they're pushing someone up the triangle and they can perhaps do something that at least doesn't push them up the triangle. If they could, they could try and reduce their level of need, but if they can't, at least they could keep it at the same level. So that could be anyone from the person at the reception in the organisation when they see someone coming in with two small children and they're having difficulties just being there. There can be some things that can help that person to see someone quickly and to have a seat, even just something as small as that. So when you understand this, you recognise that actually just to get someone to stop going up there, they're going out of control. So what you can do is actually to stop someone from going up is you start engaging with them, you start listening and understanding what problems they have. And maybe the first point of doing that is sitting down with them and giving them a cup of tea and then listening to them to understand their journey up this triangle. And at that time, that person can then decide, right, what am I going to do to help this person to stabilise and then potentially start to help them to go down that triangle of need to get to a point of stability. That's the triangle of need. Thank you. Let's take uh, some examples to see how uh, this can be used in, in real life. So someone comes in and they've been without any particular need for a long period of time and they have a death in the family, a bereavement. So what actually happens is that for a period of time that person will be here and they will have difficulties that they didn't have before. So in terms of the help that they need, they need more specific help at that period of time and then later on they'll get back to the place that they were before. Another example is someone that comes in and um, he came in and he was very agitated and clearly had a lot on his mind. When someone had gone into his property uh, with him, they found that he had some ch children in the house, young children, but he had almost no furniture and almost nothing in the fridge. So in terms of level of need, that person's level of need is probably up here somewhere. Now, looking at his history, it was clear that it took him about two years to get from here to here. Various mishaps had happened in his life and his partner had left him relatively recently, which had pushed him significantly further up that, up that triangle. So 
there were lots of things going on with his relationship in his life that actually we couldn't directly do anything about. But one thing we noticed was that he had debts and he had no idea how to deal with those debts. It was quite clear about that. So what we did is he said that he had these papers all over the place. They were in a bag, actually, some of them. And he didn't even bother opening letters anymore from the council because of what he was afraid that they would say in them. So we asked him to bring in all the papers in a bag. So what we did is we got an old uh, binder from the shelves and a hole punch and some clear plastic envelopes. And we helped him to put all of his debts and letters from each different type of place. So it was the electricity bill, it was council tax, it was rent. We helped him to put those in a file all segmented and clear so that he could have and see the record of what was going on with his debts in one place. Now that took about 40 minutes and in the, in the, in the time that, that we helped him to do that he started to get clarity as to what some of the financial issues were that he had that perhaps he needed to address f earlier rather than later. And um, by simply doing an exercise like that, not only did we manage to keep him at that level, we managed to help him a little bit starting to go down the triangle. And, and part of this was helping him to get his life back in control. Unfortunately, uh, there were some other issues in his life that over the next three or four weeks, his life went back into greater levels of complexity. We were not able to help him when that happened, but there are other government organizations that could help him that we could then pinpoint him in that direction. But it just goes to show that if you have a picture like this about somebody, regardless of whether or not we can deal with those problems, it helps us to focus up and prioritize our help in such a way that any officer within the council, regardless of how trained they are, or regardless of what they do, can actually understand this and help those people go down that triangle. And this is particularly um, practical for tenants in social housing. So you've got housing officers going out there and there may be a myriad of things that are going on in those people's lives. Instead of chopping those things up into different council services, this is a way to see how those things all affect that person all at the same time and how we can actually watch. And they, they'll tell you when things are starting to get easier in their lives. And that's the real measure, is when they engage with you and they start to tell you about things that are improving in their lives. And this is a way of seeing that as a picture, a relatively simple picture, but a very effective picture in the organizations that have used this.